Many years ago, they discovered that fermented milk, particular fermented milk from Mongolia, had beneficial effects in regards to blood pressure. It kind of worked like an ACE inhibitor. And so what this one company wanted to do is find out what could possibly be the active ingredient in this fermented milk that's having that type of biological effect. And this one company by the name of Calpis discovered that. And what they did is discover this group of uh, amino acids called lactotripeptides. And these lactotripeptides were known as valine, proline, proline, or valyl, prolyl, proline, and isoleucine, proline, proline, to be technical, otherwise known as isoleucine, prolyl, proline. We're just going to call it VPP and IPP for short. And what they did is they basically isolated this lactotripeptide and made it so it survived the digestive tract therefore enhancing the effect of this lactotripeptide. Now the interesting part about it is once they enhanced this uh, lactotripeptide derived from this fermented milk, it had incredible impact in regards to restoring healthy blood pressure. Now, I say healthy, I'm not just saying lowering blood pressure, but I'm saying healthy blood pressure. In fact, so much so, in many studies, it actually beat out most of the common ACE inhibitors, your typical angiotensin conversion enzyme inhibitors. But that was just the beginning of this phenomenal lactotripeptide combination. All right, let's turn the page now and look at endothelial dysfunction. Let's look at this first study here. Look at that. That is basically the benefits that a meal peptide delivered, or I should say this group of lactotripeptides, in less than, or I should say, one week. In one week, it began to attenuate, or I should say, restore or help endothelial dysfunction. Now you could end it right there and say, wow, this is good, and that's all I need to know. But that would be doing a disservice to it. Let's go to the next one. We're going to look at arterial stiffness. All right, now what they did is they measured arterial stiffness by pulse wave velocity. Pulse wave velocity, many of you may discover, is going to become the gold standard for determining cardiovascular uh, risk per se much more so prior than your typical blood pressure or cholesterol or anything else like that. But that's beside the point. Through pulse wave velocity, it improved within eight weeks. Now in these studies, often they'll use postmenopausal females to determine the arterial stiffness or pulse wave velocity in regards to meal peptide. Reason being is because postmenopausal estrogen levels tend to decline a little bit. Estrogen levels decline, you tend to get a little more arterial stiffness. Well, in combination with exercise, and the amyl peptide, or I should say lactotripeptides, it had a synergistic effect. So working together, it worked far better than either one alone, which is incredible, something especially important for people who are going to be post-menopausal. I apologize about that. Then the next one, let us look at arterial plaque. And this is where it comes down to, again, what necessarily causes the arterial plaque. In this animal model, look at the first one, that's the basal diet. Second one, skim milk with VP not added to it. And the third one is a natural home for high levels of VPP and IPP, that fermented milk we talked about in the beginning because it tends to be high in bacteria called Lactobacillus helveticus, if I'm pronouncing that properly. So, in its natural state, look how clear it kept the arteries as, compared, as opposed to basically a basal diet. That's what makes it phenomenal also. And here's the catch, the mechanism of action. All right, now often they'll say, well, this is basically, this lactotripeptide may work along the lines of the bradykinin mechanism. Bottom line, it's, it's inhibiting the degradation of bradykinin, like most ACE inhibitors, and therefore resulting in higher nitric oxide levels. There's an interesting aspect to that. With bradykinin, that is one way to basically raise nitric oxide levels. And often you would think that if you took a meal peptide with an ACE inhibitor, you would have excessive bradykinin levels and then basically have the side effects associated with it, which could be dry, cough, asthma, so on and so forth. That to this state has not occurred. So, notice that that may not be a, a combination issue. It's possible that the nitric oxide level could be elevated in some other fashion, whether through reduction of inflammation, acetylcholine path, purine path. It may be a combination of bradykinin, acetylcholine, and purine. But it's incredibly, incredibly, incredibly safe, and it does result in elevated nitric oxide levels. Just nothing that seems to be in a pathway that conflicts with other medications at least found to this date. Now, here's the interesting part about this amyl peptide, or I should say these lactotripeptides. 
If it was just the cardiovascular system affected, that'd be one thing. But it seems to be expanding the horizons way beyond even that. To me, I kind of consider the amyl peptide to be kind of like where polyphenols may have been many decades back. It is just the beginning of studying these lactotripeptides. The reason why? Look at the exercise chart. Look at the reduction in muscle soreness. Look at the reduction in fatigue. Look how it heaps, helps keep the heart rate uh, from basically going out of bounds, per se, keep the heart rate in a, a more stable form, uh, per se. And that's in regard to exercise. So basically, either working with the endothelial lining, or whatever it is, the amyl peptide, these lactotripeptides, the VPP and IPP combination has many more effects, probably more like that of an adaptogen than generally just something that help, helps, per se, just with blood pressure itself. That's why it's important to look at, at the mechanism of action of these lactotripeptides in regards to how they operate in the body. So your benefits may expand way beyond that of just helping maintain a healthy blood pressure. Innovative medical doctors or scientifically based consumers are going to have a field day with this because it is a phenomenal, phenomenal substance for just beginning to scratch the surface of what it is capable of. Again, any questions? Feel free to email me or comment on this route trip channel. Signing up once again. I hope this brief explanation of lactotrypeptides really does help. Thank you.